So we've been getting more calls for a low TSH. During these last five months of the pandemic, the number of calls for a low TSH has gone up, I would say, up close to triple what I've seen in the last two years. So, and none of them have been tested positive for COVID. So it makes me wonder whether they feel the stress of the pandemic directly or indirectly. Maybe their sleep is getting affected. So I thought I'll get out of my pajamas and write up for you what the low TSH means and what you can do to understand it better. So what is it if you have a low TSH? First, let's figure out where does your thyroid gland sit? This is the voice box from where you talk and you sing. This is your windpipe. This is the windpipe. And when I swallow, you can see a small butterfly shaped gland that's here that moves up and down when I swallow. That's a normal sized thyroid gland. It sits around your windpipe. And if it's normal, it just slides up and down when you swallow. If it gets bigger, it could have one nodule, it could have the whole gland enlarged, and it can cause some difficulty swallowing in that case, and it could have multiple lumps and bumps which get very crowded in your neck. That's a goiter. So the first thing when someone comes to us with a low TSH is we have to let them know this is hyperthyroidism. A low TSH means you have hyperthyroidism. Now it means something very different depending whether you are on thyroid medication or not. So that's the first thing you have to think about. Are you on thyroid medication? If not, we'll talk about this side. If yes, we'll talk about this side. Let's say your TSH is low and you are already on thyroid medication. Then there are one of two possibilities. Either you are on thyroid hormone, levothyroxine, and you're getting too much external thyroid hormone replacement. In that case, you need to contact your doctor and ask them to adjust the dose so that you are being given less T4. Okay, it's LT4, levothyroxine. If it's a very low TSH, they may decide to stop it completely, but the treatment will be you need to reduce the thyroid hormone replacement if you are on levothyroxine. If you are on thyroid blocking drugs, that means you are getting too little thyroid blockade and your doctor needs to adjust that dose. If your TSH is low and you are not on thyroid medication, the best thing to do is get a Technetium 99 uptake and scan. Technetium is a special dye that is part of the scanning done in the nuclear medicine department of a big radiology department in the large hospitals. And this dye will help give us three different photograph patterns to figure out the diagnosis. The first pattern is a low uptake scan where the thyroid gland which sits here does not take up any dye. The second option is the gland takes up a lot of the dye and lights up like a butterfly. That's a different diagnosis. And the third diagnosis can be that one spot is taking up a lot of the dye or maybe multiple spots are taking it up. That's a third option in the diagnosis of a low TSH. If you have a low TSH and low uptake on your technetium scan, the diagnosis is thyroiditis. You may or may not be, need to be treated with medication for this. The medicines given might aim at blocking the high thyroid hormone. We call this anti-thyroid drugs. There are many options. We might give you drugs to manage the symptoms, which is to block the high pulse or to slow down the tremor and the shakiness. We might need to give you steroids to block the inflammation. So the doctor has to be very involved if they're putting you on medications. We also want you to focus on your stress, immunity, and lifestyle so that you can get off the medication quicker. And your antibody might be positive, it might not be. My thyroid antibody is still positive. I went through thyroiditis and my TSH fluctuated, so your TSH can fluctuate. So keep an eye on that. Don't worry about the antibody. If you have a low TSH, and your technetium scan shows high uptake in both sides of the thyroid gland, 
Now it might be a normal sized thyroid gland or an enlarged thyroid gland. Okay, that's called Graves disease. You might have eye symptoms as well. You need to stop smoking. Okay, and the treatment would be maybe 18 months of anti-thyroid drugs which have some amount of side effects and so we need to monitor that. I make sure my patients focus on stress management. Usually this gets triggered with stress. And the second and the third option, I find I don't have to take most of my patients towards radioactive iodine or surgery. The problem with that is if you lose the thyroid completely and you need to be on lifelong thyroid hormones. So we aim for getting a cure in the first 18 months. If you have a low TSH and on the technetium scan, you have one spot that picks up all the dye, one hot nodule, that's a toxic nodule. Or if you have an enlarged gland compared to the normal size gland, it's a goiter and the dye is being picked up by multiple spots, that's a toxic multinodular goiter. The treatment would be antithyroid drugs for enough time to cool you off, get the blood tests normal, and then go for the final treatment, which is radioactive iodine or surgery. But I'm finding more and more in my practice that when we have a good conversation, a lot of patients, when they focus on stress management, they're able to avoid these more permanent treatments. Definitely, if they go for these, they have less of the lifelong hypothyroidism that comes in Graves' disease, so you need follow-up. So now you know what to do when you see a low TSH. If you're on medication, you're either getting too much replacement or too little blockade. If you are not on medication, you go for the technetium scan to check which of the three diagnoses you have. And the way we manage our patients is we, of course, monitor them if we put them on medication, go deep into the lifestyle to help them come off the medication as soon as possible, manage the doses, focus on deep stress management, and have good close follow-up. That's what you do for a low TSH.